Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Yep, doing good, doing good. Uh, my wife likes watermelon, so. <laughs> so uh, I got the Crimson Sweets, the Jubilees, and the Charleston Gray. And then I got one yellow meat. Are they seedless or? No, they've all got seeds. All got seeds? Yes. Uh -huh. Y'all love them 10 bucks? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, can you pick out a good one? Mm -hmm. oh, all of them pretty good. I think they've all been cutting really good. I haven't had none come back on I me. Mean, this is like my 12th load, and I haven't had okay. none come back on me. So that says they're pretty good. They're pretty good. good. Yeah. So what's the difference between... What's the difference Mainly between? Mainly just the shape of them, to the be shape honest. Because they yeah, they're all red meated. Like I said, except for that one, I got one yellow meat that's the fair. Okay. But, um, okay. Let's everybody see. seems to favor the, the striped ones, you know, because most people don't know what the Charleston gray is. No. Uh, are they the same taste? Yeah. Are they? Okay. Okay. They just don't put stripes on them. So. Okay. Well, I, I think I'll take, uh, I think I'll take, take one. Of, how, how about that one? That'll work. Yeah. All right. So I got a, I got a, a crazy question for you. I'm yep. a, so I'm a pastor, uh -huh. and uh, one of the things I do is I go around all over the state of Oklahoma, and I interview people, and I ask them about their spiritual journey. Right. And if you allow me to, uh, right. I'll give you an extra $5 if you let me interview you and talk about your spiritual journey. You interested at all? I guess so. You I sure? Mean, there may be people pulling up. No, no worries. You can, just, okay. you can just pull off. You can pull off. All right. Uh, and so you, you. Don't, so you don't mind me asking you about your spiritual journey. Yeah. All right. I, I appreciate you. All right. So tell me when you're ready. Oh, you're going to record me? You know why? Oh, I don't mind. I, I look terrible. No, you look great. You look great. Okay. <laughs> All right, you ready? You look good. You look good. Okay. All right. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? All right, so I'll just, I'm just i I'm here in, what, what is this city? This is Wetumpka, Oklahoma. Okay, and you selling watermelons? I sell watermelons and cantaloupes. And cantaloupe. Mm -hmm. And so you want to give an advertisement uh, where you, exactly where you are? Um... Where the watermelons come yes. from? Yeah, uh, or just kind of the area you in here? Oh, um, I'm right here at the Four Way in Matumka, right beside the Dairy Queen, the Cow Kickers Restaurant, okay. and Super C's All right. Market. Are you out here pretty regularly? Yes, I come at least twice a week. Really? And okay. I've been here on the same corner for ten years. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you. Let me interview you. Uh, okay. Am I uh, able to use your information on my Facebook page? Yes. All right. All right. So, like I say, I'm a pastor, and I like to interview people about their spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have any uh, thoughts about uh, an afterlife or God or anything of that nature? Um, yes, I believe in Jesus with all my heart and soul. He's helped me through lots of stuff, and I hope I go to heaven. <laughs> all right. All right, so you said, I hope I go to heaven. Yes. Yep, so have you had to put it on a percentage scale? What, where do you feel like you comfortably fall if you had to put it on um, percentage scale? I would say 85. 85%? Mm -hmm. You pretty comfortable with that? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, I raise it another level by saying, let's just say, me and you got up in a plane. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your name, Mrs. Lindy? Miss Lindy. Let's just say me and you got up in a plane, and I said, Lindy, we're about to jump for fun, uh -huh. and it's a 85 percent chance that your parachute will open. Okay. Would you be a little concerned? Yeah, I'd be a lot concerned because I'm scared of heights. Oh yeah, me too. And I would not jump out of that plane. <laughs> I would crash with it. Oh, so you wouldn't even jump? You no. just go ahead and go down with the plane. I go down with the plane. <laughs> I do believe so because I think I would die of a heart attack before. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know, if you if you had to take a chance, mm -hmm. you had to jump. Uh, you would want your parachute not to be eighty five percent. I would want it to be a hundred. You want it to be a hundred percent. Well, even more importantly, if I, if I raise it up another standard, is even more important that you don't you don't jump out into eternity with an 85 percent chance you're gonna go to heaven you want your standard to be 100 yeah because eternity is just too long to be wrong would you agree miss lindy i agree so do you know how to uh what the bible says about how to get that standard up to 100 percent? do you have any idea how the bible says that you can actually know that um well i know that you have to repent okay yeah and you have to be baptized okay and live for the lord that's a good answer that's a good answer so I'll tell you specifically what Jesus said, because you just don't want to be wrong. Right. Uh, so let me just explain to you the central message of what Jesus said, and maybe you'll be able to figure out uh, what your percentage actually is. Is that your standard or you think it's God's standard, the 85%? Um, I don't know, really. Maybe it's how I feel. That's how you feel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Good answer. Uh, so let me just show you what Jesus says mm -hmm. and then you better measure it because I want you to be 100 okay, percent. All right. So so the, the Bible and you heard this before, but I'll just kind of make it make more sense. In the beginning, everything started out a OK with the story of Adam and Eve. That's, uh -huh. that's what my thumb represents. Right. It was good. Right. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened to mess everything up that you that you know? She went against the Lord. Yeah. 
Yeah, they ate from the tree they weren't supposed right. to eat from. So that means they wanted to be number one. Instead of God being number one, they wanted to be number one. Okay. All right. And, and what letter is in the middle of the word sin? I. Yeah. So anytime I do what I want to do instead of what God has told us to do, mm -hmm. I mean, this is where we violate God's standard. Right. And we're all guilty of that. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Now, I want you to keep up with your percentage here. But I want you to, um, I'll give you the good person test just to see how good you fare up. Okay. And this is not me judging you. Okay. This is for you to judge yourself. Okay. Uh, Miss Lenny, how many lies have you told in your life? I don't know. <laughs> I can't keep up with mine either. I can't keep up, yeah. Have you ever stolen anything? Um, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I have too. Here's a, just a little bit more personal one. Jesus said if you look at someone with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Right. Have you ever looked at someone with lust? Probably. Anything? All right. I'm, I'm guilty too. Uh, have you ever been angry with somebody? You yes. felt like it was... <laughs> yes. You answered that pretty quick. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. Somebody coming up, so I'll stop. I'll stop it. And I'll take this, I'll go ahead and take this and I'll, yeah. is that okay? This yeah. one right here? What you're going to like. Okay, yeah, I'll take this one. Oh, oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, you ready? I think so. All right. Okay. All right, so uh, I forgot kind of where we were. I think we were talking about the, the good person test. Yes. Okay, yes. the good person test. And I think I, uh, I went over like, would I go over? Uh, well, have, I think we made it to the lust. Lust, okay. Okay. And then, um, have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes, and I immediately ask for forgiveness. I don't do it very often, and I don't know why. Sometimes it comes out. Yeah, it just kind of comes out. Yeah. I, I immediately, I immediately, I, I do not like doing that. I immediately ask for forgiveness. Hey, I tell you, in a lot of ways, you're a lot better than I am. So, and I'll give you one more. Have you ever been like angry at somebody? You felt like you could put some pain on them? All right, you have any idea what the Bible equates that commandment with when we get we get angry with somebody? No, I don't guess so. You may be surprised. I'll show you. I'm gonna stop. All right, all right. So what so what you think about what you just read right, there? That's shocking. Yeah, yeah. So I and, and so sometimes we don't really know God's standard until we actually look specifically at it in the Bible. Right. And if you look at His standard, His standard is just like super high to keep. Right. Right. All right. right. And did I ask you what letters in the middle of the word sin? I. Yeah. So anytime I do what I want to do, who do we just put over God? Ourselves. So that's idolatry. Yeah. So if you just look at your, the x-ray, you can see like, man, if you just, if God just had to judge you based on his standard, mm -hmm. on the day of judgment, do you think you'll be innocent or guilty on the day of judgment? Right now, probably guilty. Yeah. What would you think your percentage is now? Still at 85. You see about 85%? I think so. Okay, and you because said that. I do, yep. every night I do ask for forgiveness. That's yeah. everything I've done throughout the day that has offended him. You know what? That's 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 very noble. That's very noble. Uh, and uh, and the reason why I share, let me ask, let me give you one more, one more, uh, uh, one more illustration. Um, do you have any idea who killed Jesus? I guess the people. The people. All right. Now it's gonna surprise you, Miss Miss Lindy. Okay. Did you know you killed Jesus? Probably. And I I'm killed part of the people. Absolutely, because right. he went to the cross for our yeah, sin. sin. Mm -hmm. So you got people in your family that you love. Right. If if somebody was to harm somebody in your family that you love, like heinously, like how much money could they give you to not call the law on them and prosecute them if they harm somebody in your family okay. on purpose? There, there's not any. Amount. No price. No price. It, it's a slap in your face to try yeah. to think after they hurt or, God forbid, take the life of your family, they right. can pay you to walk free. Right. Uh, now you again, who who killed Jesus? Like we did so most people are going to try to get into heaven based on trying to pay his father off by hey god i i did this i did that and i did this and god's going to look at you the same way you looked at the person that harmed your family mm -hmm. like there is no amount of like payment that you could give god to walk free this kind of makes sense so far yeah. And so if you just look at what the Bible says, you have any idea what sin deserves based on what the Bible says? What sin deserves? Yes, ma'am. No, I don't guess so. Well, the Bible says sin deserves the death penalty. It says the wages of sin is death, meaning that God is going to pay you with the death penalty. And not, it's not necessarily a physical death. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual death. And the Bible says that all man's sin deserves punishment in a place called hell. That makes sense so far? Yeah. The Bible even says no liar, no adulterer, no blasphemer will enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Because we can't do enough good to pay God off right. after what we did to the son. Right. It's just, that makes sense? Mm -hmm. So, 
there must be another way that the Bible says that we can get to heaven. Not based on our works, but based on what he did on the cross. And you heard this before, but maybe it'll connect now. Make, make it look a little bit more, make more sense. Well, Lindy, 2,000 years ago, God knew that we were not going to be able to keep the standard. Mm -hmm. So he sent the standard to us. And his name was? Jesus. Yeah. So we broke the law. He sends his son, Jesus, to pay the fine for the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Lindy, if you was charged with like a, let's say, a billion dollars worth of speeding tickets. <laughs> <laughs> if, if somebody walked in, the, the, uh, like Bill Gates or Elon Musk, mm -hmm. somebody rich walked in and paid your speeding fine, the judge could do what? Can pay him or like if somebody pays a speeding fine the judge can let you go oh yeah okay yeah. he could dismiss your case right right mm -hmm. because you couldn't pay it right well god knew that you could not pay for your own sin mm -hmm. so he used his son his son he was punished for the sin of the world and it was our fault but god loved you enough to send his son in your place because he knew you couldn't make the payment right so he paid it when he went to the cross and it's not because like we're good it's because he's good and he's rich in mercy the Bible says he's not willing that anyone should perish. So if you would transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior, then the Bible says God will let you go as a free gift because of what his son did on the cross. Right. If you try to pay it, you're going to spend eternity in hell. But right. if he pays it, the debt is paid. Okay. And so does, does that, what you think? Of, what do you think I'm saying? That through Jesus, our mm -hmm. sins are washed away and you know, we can go to heaven. Absolutely. That's the whole central message of the Bible that I didn't really understand that somebody broke it down. Yeah. And I'll give you one last illustration. You mind if I give you one last illustration and kind of button this up? So it's kind of, kind of like this. Just imagine you were driving your car down the road and you had a, and on, on accident, you, you ran over somebody and killed them. And you weren't meaning to do it. You just weren't paying attention. And you find out on the day of the, the, the court date, it was the judge's 16-year-old son that you ran over. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's nothing you can do to plead your case at this point. Man, right. he's, he's punitively... Yeah, he's mad. He's, he's mad. Hurt. And so he's going to give you what you what you deserve. Right. Well, same thing. Our sin is what ran over Jesus. Mm -hmm. We may not have been intentionally trying to do it, but we did it anyway. Right. So God gives us the death penalty. So let's just say this earthly judge gives you the execution chair. Mm -hmm. Put this electrical like contraption on your head. Put a right. bag over your face. He, he, he straps both arms in, both legs in. And Lindy, as the executioner is walking out of the room, he says, you have any last words before, you, before I flip the switch? What are you going to say in your last dying words? Dear Lord, please forgive me. Here I come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So right, right before he's about to flip the switch, you just tense up your body and close your eyes. And mm -hmm. Plus, you can't see because the bag is over your face. And all of a sudden, the front chamber door flies open. And you hear these footsteps getting closer to your chair. Mm -hmm. And you, you're curious. And the bag comes off your head. And to your surprise, there stands the judge. Mm -hmm. The judge of the son you ran over. And instead of him having anger in his eyes, he has tears streaming down his face. What are you thinking right now? <laughs> kind of confused. Yeah. Now you're going to make me cry. Thank you. Uh, this, this is what changed my life. You, you, you kind of know where I'm going with this? You're so sweet. Sorry. You're so sweet. This is, what's gonna, this is what changed my life. So here's what happens. He calls his innocent son, his 18-year-old son in the room. Mm -hmm. You already killed the 16-year-old, but his 18-year-old son comes into the room, Miss Lindy. And here's what he does. He looks at his son, and his son says, Daddy, why are you crying? And he says... Son, do you remember what we talked about? His son says, yeah, daddy, hand me the keys. So, so Linda, he goes over to where you're sitting at. He starts to unstrap all your arms and your legs. And he tells you to stand next to the chair. So you stand next to the chair, still curious. Mm -hmm. Well, his innocent son sits in your place. Mm -hmm. And his daddy comes over with his hands and knees trembling. He straps his innocent son to that chair. And he put the electrical bucket on his head and he puts a bag over his face. And you're trying to figure out, like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You're shocked. Well, as the judge starts going out of the room, he says to his father, Father, is there any other way? Is there any other way this can be done? And his father says, no, son. He says, Father, not my will, but yours be done. So the judge goes out of the room, puts his hand on the switch, and he flipped the switch, executing who? His own son. For who? For me. Yeah, and as his body is shaking uncontrollably, he yells out to his father. He says, Father, it is finished. The price is paid. And he dies. Judge comes back in the room, Miss Lindy. He falls on his knees after seeing his son. And he looks at you, Miss Lindy. He says, would you accept what my son has done for you? You only got two choices. Which one would you do? Would you reject it or accept it? Would you accept it? Yeah, how would you live? Different. You'll never be the same, right? 
every every time you're thinking about speeding again, you slow down because of the mercy. Right. It wasn't the punishment that was going to slow you down. It was the mercy that slowed you down. It's the mercy that caused you to change. You understand what I'm getting at right now? You know, and then God loved you so much that he knew you were not going to be able to keep the standard. So what he did is he sent Jesus to us. And the Bible says he flipped the switch on his son 2,000 years ago on that cross. You know why he did it? Because he loved us. Because he loves us. And he don't want us to take the punishment. So he took the punishment for us because he, he cares. And so if you would if you would accept what he did, Miss Lindy, on that cross, you know what he'll do for you? You don't have to worry about going to hell anymore. You can be 100% because it's not based on what you did. It's based on what he did on the cross. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm glad you feel like that. I'm so glad you feel like that because most people don't really understand how much Jesus loves us that he paid the price. He don't want us to go to hell. So I'm just hoping like uh, you basically understand exactly what I'm saying. So it, do you feel like maybe it's time for you to say, God, I'm giving it all to you. And even if I, I never be perfect, I'm willing to be perfected. Because if you give your heart completely all the way over to Jesus, it's not just you're going to be perfect. But thank God that you have a perfect father and he will discipline you, love you and lead you uh, like like my kids. I got I got three kids. Miss Lenny, my kids break stuff around the house all the time. Who keeps paying for it? You do. Why? Because you love them. I love them. I'm a kid. They'll never be able to out. They'll never be able to do enough wrong to not be my. Right. Well, same thing. When you become a daughter of God and you'll never be able to do enough wrong to to get away from your father, mm -hmm. he'll just kind of. He'll just kind of double down on you because he loves you. But he'll never kick you out of the kingdom of heaven. That's the assurance you have. And you'll never have to worry about being 85% or 50%. You're 100% because of what he did. You think you feel like you're ready to completely just tell God how you feel? And... I think he knows how I feel. He knows it? Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Do you mind if I pray for you? Yes. Okay. Uh, and, and if you're just in your heart, you can just tell God, Lindy, how you feel. You know, I say it out loud. Just tell God, like, God, I know everything was good. I, I went my own way, but you, you, you have to punish. That's the highest finger. Our middle finger is the highest finger, but you committed to send Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sin. And God, I'm humbling myself. I'm becoming small like my smallest finger. And I need you. I want, I, I need you. I don't know things that you're going through, but I know, man, just like if you, you in need like I was, we all in need of him, bro. So I'll pray for you, okay? Father, thank you so much for this precious lady. God, her heart is so soft. And she recognized, God, that she is a sinner. She recognized that she needs you not just as a religion, but a relationship. And I pray, God, right now that you will soften her heart. God, continue to do that and draw her to you and help, and help her to see, God, if she's truly, fully, all the way accepted you, she'd never have to worry about being 85%. She could be 100%, not because of what she did. It's because of what you did on that cross. And I thank you for this opportunity to buy some watermelons. And I pray that you continue to let her crawl in your lap and put her head between your chest. And I know there's people in her family that probably needs to know you. God, use her as a light. God, find her a good church, maybe around that she can get plugged into. God, help her to continue to fall in love with you, God, as you have been so so, so good to her, especially from what we've done to you, God. We should have been locked away in hell, but you have been so merciful to let us hear this message. And I pray for Ms. Lenny in her life. Grab a hold on to her, God, and give her peace and comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. I, can I hug you? <laughs> You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Do you got any questions at all? Yeah, I can kind of chill. Let me cut this off. Baptized yeah. whenever I was a child, and I was a, a, a baptist. <laughs> right. But then as an adult, I got rebaptized at the Pentecostal church in okay. the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay. And then in Jesus' name. Okay. So they, at first, it was just in the Father's name and the, you know, the Holy Power. They said I had to be baptized in Jesus' name or it was no good. Pretty much. So, so I went back and got Well, I can tell you that the Baptists and the Pentecostal, the only thing they differ on is tongues, really, essentially. Right. Uh, we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the same thing. We're just using two different words. Uh, it'd be like somebody, those are two different kind of watermelons, but we still call it watermelon. Right. right. Like, right. I, I, it's just one of Good those illustration. Right. So are so, you Pentecostal or Baptist? We're Baptist, okay. uh, uh, but but we're also, we, we, we were missionaries for almost 10 years and... Uh, We've worked in every church in the As a matter of fact, I've preached in the Pentecostal church here. Right. I've preached in the Methodist church here, and I've preached in the, the Assembly church here. So I've preached in them all. Right. Um, we Close your ears. He works for the Baptist General Convention. So it's to be the path she needs to continue to follow. Um, God, that it would be more than just about reading uh, and, and praying. God, that it would be about living your word. Uh, God, that the, the discipleship would continue. 
And God, that these, this moment will be one she remembers forever is the moment her life changed. God, and she just started following you in a way she's never done before. Mm. Uh, God, we're thankful for Coach T, uh, that he made this, uh, this trip, uh, God, and that he had this uh, chance to share the gospel uh, and just bring this back into her mind. Uh, God, we pray for uh, our church that we would be able to serve her well, uh, God, and that we would, be, uh, we would become a family that she's been looking for. Uh, God, we pray for her business here, God, that you would just make it fruitful, uh, just like what she's selling. Uh, God, that you would just expand it and multiply it and give her what she needs. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so Linda, I'm, I'm curious. What, what was the catch there that uh, kind of, <laughs> when I was sharing with you, what, what was the thing that hit you? Because it seemed like you were really... And I was 85% sure getting into heaven and now, you know, when you, the way he put it down, you know, if you crash and you only got 85% chance of getting right. in there, is that enough? Is it enough? Yeah. Yeah. When Jesus grabs onto you, he grabs onto you like this, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be times you're going to let go, right? So he'll let go and I, I'll play chocolate Jesus, all right? <laughs> so the assurance that we have is when you hold, when, when you lock on to Jesus, he locks on to you. Who's more faithful to the relationship? Is. So that's going to be times you let go. But the reason why you're going to get into heaven is not because you hold on to God. It's because he's holding on you. When Jesus saves us, he grabs on to us. Yeah. And he doesn't let us go. Right. So, yeah. So I appreciate you, Ms. Nick. appreciate you. You're an incredible lady. Thank I you. Would, we would also, like I said, I would love to, to help in any way I can. So don't be afraid to come down there and, and be set with us. Like I said, well, We'll take care of you the best we can. So. Appreciate that. Hey, Pastor, thank, you. No thank you for coming, That's man. I love you, man. That. Thank you so we're much. We're for, hey, so. can I shake your hand? Absolutely. It's, it's You'll absolutely see her tomorrow. You'll see teacher, me. I'm a teacher. So. Really? Yeah. So. You got to be kidding. Yeah. So I'll see you tomorrow. And then, but like you, I said, you can come to that afterwards you, as well. You know us. But yeah. I don't really don't, know. Don't be afraid. We'll come by some watermelon. I'll talk to you soon. Now, who's going to We're doing the teacher tomorrow, so I can buy some. Adrian is our son. We'll come get some. How long has been your son? For 22 years.